I always find myself looking forward to Christmas, Christmas Day, the culmination of the Christmas season. It's always something that fills my heart with warmth and joy. But then immediately after, there is another holiday that seems to take center stage, especially most recently, and that holiday is Kwanzaa. It's a celebration from December 26th to January 1st. And if you look up the definition of Kwanzaa, you'll see it's a secular holiday in which African-American individuals celebrate their cultural heritage and traditional values. This definition is a lie. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. Because I see so many people out there who fall all over themselves trying to wish African-American people or Africans a happy Kwanzaa. And honestly, if you would ask the average person what Kwanzaa really is, they'd probably just sit there and stare back at you with a blank stare. Because honestly, most people don't know. But as you know, I've done my research and I'm going to actually help you understand the true dark origins of this holiday and why anyone who chooses to indulge in Kwanzaa or wish happy Kwanzaa to someone else is actually showing not only their ignorance, but actually their disdain for a large subset of the population. And this is what I mean. We're going to have to turn the clock all the way back to 1965. We're going to go and jump into what was called the Watts Rebellion. That is really where the Kwanzaa holiday truly began. So there was a phenomenon that took place in 1965. It was called the Watts Rebellion. Now, Watts is a predominantly or was a predominantly black neighborhood in Los Angeles, California. And on August 11th in that year, there were two stepbrothers, two African-American stepbrothers who were pulled over by the police in the early evening hours. Now, these two stepbrothers were just driving, but the police officers had the driver get out of the car and perform a sobriety test. The driver of the car failed the sobriety test, and he was subsequently arrested. And this is where chaos ensued. The other brother who was in the vehicle chose to get into a scuffle with the brother who was getting arrested, while that brother himself, the one who had just failed the sobriety test, himself was getting into scuffles with law enforcement. And it continued to grow and balloon from there. A crowd began to gather of other individuals, again, in a predominantly black neighborhood. And these individuals were starting to engage very violently with the police officers themselves. Now, bear in mind, no one should be trying to stand up for someone who is driving drunk, who can't pass a sobriety test. That also, that already is a failure of character and morality to some degree, but I digress. It continued to grow. Then the mother of the two gentlemen who were getting arrested, she joins the fray, and then others join the fray. And honestly, this kicked off what became known as the Watts Rebellion or the Watts Riots, where for the next five, almost six days, from August 11th to August 16th of 1965, there were so many individuals who chose to riot against the unjust treatment, and they called it unjust treatment, that these two young men received at the hands of the police. During this time, there were white individuals in the area who were pulled from their cars and beaten. There was so much property damage that took place. There was over a thousand injuries, and there were actually over 30 fatalities, many of whom were black. Now, if you've been paying attention to the social temperature, if you will, that actually sounds very similar to what we've seen most recently with members of the BLM movement. But I think it stands to reason that what came out of all this, a commission was formed after the riots finally died down, after all this damage was done. And in that commission, they were trying to identify what was it that started this Watts Rebellion in the first place. And some of the suggestions that came out in the aftermath was individuals in the community, they wanted to have improvements in, with their schools, improvements with employment. They wanted to have uh, differences in the police relationship there in that community. And then shortly thereafter, Mr. Karenga, I think it was, Ma Ma I forget how to pronounce his first name, Mr. Karenga, he was the one who decided to initiate a new holiday. And this holiday was what became known as Kwanzaa. Now, it's very interesting when you realize that Kwanzaa itself is only barely 60 years old. And with Kwanzaa, it was supposed to be, again, a celebration of African-American traditional values and so on and so forth. But what also I find very interesting is the very values that are said to be the cornerstone of Kwanzaa. Now, Kwanzaa actually comes from a Swahili phrase, which means first fruits. But Kwanzaa is a seven day celebration, right? And it's intended to lift up and celebrate seven particular core ideals. I'm going to read them out to you because the words are a little bit uh, difficult to pronounce. 
But the seven principles of Kwanzaa, as determined by Karenga, are Umoja, which means unity, Kuji Chagulia, which is self determination. There's Ujima, which means collective work and responsibility. Ujama, which is cooperative economics. Nia, which means purpose. Kuumba, which is creativity. And Imani, which is faith. Now remember, these are all the, the pillars, more or less, the seven principles of Kwanzaa. But what most people don't realize is that Karenga himself was not an individual who should have been held in high regard himself. Remember, he chose to use the Watts Rebellion as a springboard from which to initiate this new holiday. But Karenga himself is a very colorful guy, and I mean that pun 110%. Karenga was a black nationalist. Now, a black nationalist, more or less, is just a nicer way to say one of the, the crazy black radical individuals who believes in black power and so on and so forth, right? And back during that time, Karenga, he had this brilliant idea to have this celebration, right? But if you fast forward just a few years after he created Kwanzaa in 1966, fast forward five years, and Karenga is sentenced to federal prison for false imprisonment and for felony assault against women. The tales that come from the kind of crazy person Karenga truly was should give any individual pause and should make them question why they should even take anything that he birthed or originated with any degree of normalcy or regularity whatsoever. But he was uh, actually an individual who seemed to enjoy whipping women with electrical cords, beating them with uh, karate batons. He preferred uh, bashing them over the head with toasters. Uh, he, he preferred putting detergent in their mouths, forcing them to lie on the ground while someone else sits on top of them while he runs water from a hose into their mouths while detergent's in their mouth as well, right? This wonderful, wonderful guy, right? But remember, happy Kwanzaa. This is supposed to be a celebration of empowerment and unity. And that was Karenga's initial stated intent, was this holiday should be something that we use to celebrate those better parts of African heritage and traditional values. But I would question the overall purpose and what we've actually seen transpire over these past several decades since the Watts Rebellion, since the origin of Kwanzaa even began. Because if you look at what the, unfortunately, the African American community largely has accustomed themselves to, it is the very same behavior that those individuals engaged in back in the 1960s when the Watts Rebellion actually kicked off. We're talking about resisting the police. We're talking about being in the wrong, but not being able to admit that you're in the wrong. We're talking about rioting, causing property damage, and honestly, causing the death of many individuals who are also members of that community. But remember those seven principles I told you about? The principles such as cooperative economics, principles like creativity, principles like unity. These are all things that are supposedly supposed to be the cornerstone of Kwanzaa, right? If that was the case, then why is it that many members of the black community still fail to champion those values as you would assume they would if they actually took Kwanzaa and the spirit of Kwanzaa, which was birthed by a crazy person, actually seriously? And they don't. Best example of that is what happened most recently in Detroit. There's a middle school, I believe, middle school or high school. It was named after Dr. Ben Carson. Dr. Ben Carson is an individual who I would argue embodies much of what those seven principles actually are. But you know what Detroit voted to do? The school board voted and they voted to have his name removed from the school. Dr. Ben Carson is a brilliant neurosurgeon. He embodies all those values of being cooperative, being creative, unity, aspiration, all these things are supposed to be indicators of black excellence. But simply because he chooses to live his life and view the world differently than many who have the, the crabs in the bucket mentality still choose to do today, his name is not allowed to be put in a place of esteem. That in and of itself should indicate to you that even though individuals will claim to be in support of Kwanzaa and, you know, black lives or the African-American communities. It's very revealing when you understand where those holidays, where those tenets even come from and why individuals will continue to honestly slap themselves in the face by honoring and giving credence 
to a holiday, a secular holiday, barely 60 years old, simply because it has become the new in vogue thing to do. We've seen many elected officials. We've seen uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And it stands to reason Kamala Harris is only 25 percent black if you're going to call being Jamaican fully black. So I don't know why she celebrates Kwanzaa. Maybe she celebrates it only for one day and three quarters. Who knows? Because she's 25 percent. I don't even know. But even Pete Buttigieg has come out. Oh, happy Kwanzaa, this and that as transportation melts down across the country. This is the latest ploy utilized by individuals who care nothing for African-American people, but who will use every opportunity to try to ingratiate themselves further to these individuals while standing by and tacitly encouraging their continued self-destruction. Any individual who runs around and falls all over themselves wishing people of color a happy Kwanzaa should take a look in the mirror. Because they are supporting a holiday, supporting a man, supporting ideals that they themselves don't even support or fully believe in. And they're simply doing it because it's the next best way to get that next hit of dopamine that comes from being part of the next social trend. That's what I want you to think about with this video. There's so many people who will just rush to do the latest cool thing because to them, it's not even about being authentic or even knowing the facts themselves. It's just all about trying to present themselves as if they truly are woke or here for the next big thing. And let me tell you this, they should get smoke for that every single time. And that's the thought I wanna leave you with. Let's pray. God, you tell us in Isaiah 20, you say, woe to those who call good evil and evil good, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Who call darkness light and dark, uh, who call, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. And we really do ask you to continue to open individuals eyes out there who for one reason or another continue to play part in a game that will only end in their ultimate self destruction. We ask you to remove the blinders from their eyes and we ask you to give us the awareness and the continued tenacity to do our due diligence to find the real facts and share those with others. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. That's the message for this video. I want you to think very deeply about this, about Kwanzaa in general, and then about how we're going to continue to push back against a completely false narrative yourself. You cannot claim to be an individual who is for the empowerment of women. You cannot claim to be a feminist and then say happy Kwanzaa, knowing full well that the founder of Kwanzaa himself was notorious for and went to prison for beating women routinely. You cannot say happy Kwanzaa to someone and then continue to encourage them to self-destruct in their own communities. You cannot say happy Kwanzaa, which is supposed to be all about unity and cooperation, cooperative economics, and so on and so forth, and then continue to support the ideals that are the antithesis of thereof. So think very hard about that. If you need to know someone out there who needs to hear that message, I encourage you to share it with them. I do want to say this is my last video of 2022 and thank you so much for taking time out of your days this year to join me every week as I do these live stream videos for you. All, the, you, all those of you out there who have supported me, messages of encouragement, I cannot thank you enough for that. But I also want to say this for the haters that are out there, for the people who cannot stand what I do, just know that I'm not going to stop. 2023 and 2024 and 2025, 26, 27, 28, I'm still going to be here and I am going to continue to challenge the false narrative that you continue to promote that can only result in the destruction, not only of me and my people, but of the entire human race. And that's not a threat. That's a promise. But to those of you out there who supported my work, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my hearts. You know, I love you. I appreciate you all. And I will catch you in the next one.